and action! Hello, my statisticians. We're back for section 3.5. This is called exploratory data analysis. And so what we're going to be doing is talking about what exploratory data analysis is. It's another one of those things that sounds real complicated, but it isn't. And um, we're going to talk about the five number summaries and box plots. So that's what's in these notes. So hopefully you have your notes out in front of you and let's get going. So traditional versus exploratory. Now, by the way, sometimes exploratory is not uh, good, but in this case, it's pretty good. And we've done traditional statistics up to this point. We're going to be starting with what I'm going to call EDA because I'm a math person. I like to abbreviate stuff. In traditional statistics, the purpose is to confirm conjectures about the nature of data. So does this, is this true according to the data? Exploratory data analysis is all about the data. How is the distribution of the data? Is it more variable? What's the center and the spread of the data? So it's more about examining the data and what the data itself tells us. Organization. In traditional uh, statistics, they use frequency distributions, which you're familiar with, with the cumulative frequencies and so on. In exploratory data analysis, they're going to organize stuff in stem and leaf plot. The basic thing is you're going to put data in order. You're going to sort the data. In graphic representations, that's your graphs. Traditional, they use histogram, frequency polygon, OGIVs, and so on. That's the, the traditional statistics. In EDA, they use box plots. You might know them as box and whisker. This should have been a whisker. Not whisper. That's a typo. So it should have been box and whisker plot. And uh, you may have done those already. They're easy peasy. You're going to love them. So the measure of central tendency the traditionally is the mean. In this case, we're going to use the median. And the measure of variation we had was standard deviation for the traditional uh, statistics and interquartile range, the IQR, which from the last uh, set of notes you should know is the Q3 minus Q1, the quartile one, minus, a quartile three minus quartile one. Let's get going. So a box plot or box and whisker diagram is a graph of the data set that consists of a line extending from the minimum to the maximum value and a box with lines drawn at the first quartile, the median, and the third quartile. Well, by definition, it looks kind of confusing, but here's what one looks like. And you may have seen these before. They start with your minimum value, that's the far left, and the maximum, that gives you your range. And then in the, they draw a vertical line at the quartile one, the median, and the quartile three. The edges of the box are formed by putting a box around between quartile one and quartile three. When I draw these, I usually start with a dashed line, and I draw the box, and then I, draw, I erase the line, little dashed line inside the box. All righty. So five number summary just talks about the five numbers you use to create a box plot. And that's the quartile, the minimum value, the quartile one, the median, the quartile three, and the maximum value. You find those five numbers and do your box plot. Easy, easy, easy. So here's a stockbroker who recorded the number of clients she saw each day over an 11 day period. The data is shown. Construct a box plot for the data. And first step when you're doing this, you'll notice these are out of order. So you need to sort the data. And pretend like you do that. I know you can put data in order. So it should be 23, 27, 29, 30, 31, 33, 38, 40, at 42, 43, 51. And we're going to create a box plot. So that means we need those five numbers. So we're going to find the median. The median is the one that's just directly in the middle. Since it's an odd number, yay, you just have to take the one right in the middle. That's going to be your median. And then quartile one, there's one, two, three, four, five. Easy. Right in the middle is 29. So quartile one is 29. And then quartile three is going to be over here. You look at these last five values and take the one that's in the middle. It's going to be 42. Then we have our five values to create our box plot. 23 and 51 are the min and the max. Then you've got quartile one, the median, and the quartile three right there. Bada boom, bada bing. This, these three middle datas will form the box. These are the two edges of the box. That, the 23 and the 51 are where the whiskers are drawn to. That's going to be forming your whiskers. So let's take a look. They say to draw a scale for the data on the x-axis. That's why you want your min and your max, so that you can put the scale right. So let's do our number line. 
and I started from 20 and I went to 50. You want the scale to be a logical scale, and so 20 to 50 would include most of it. It's 51, but we'll just go a little past 50. So locate the lowest value, Q1, the median, Q3, and the highest value. So there's the minimum, there's your maximum, and then you're just estimating where those points would be. I put little points, you're probably going to erase uh, the middle points later because they're going to be vertical lines instead of these points. And then draw a box around Q1 and Q3 and draw a vertical line through the median, connect the upper and lower values. So here's what I do. I like to draw a dashed line, and then I do the vertical lines among Q1 and Q3 right through those, and then draw your box, put a vertical line at the median, and then I erase the dashes in between there, and I do solid lines to the edges. So here's the whiskers, you can see, and here's the box plot. Pretty easy, eh? What information can you get from a box plot? Well, a lot. You can tell a lot about the dis distribution of your data. If the median is near the center of the box, the distribution is approximately symmetric. And you might want to sketch this little guy. So here's a box plot. So that would mean the median, that vertical line, lies in the middle of the box. If it is to the left of center, it's positively skewed right there. And if it is to the right of center, it's going to be negative skewed. So if it's over this way, your data is negatively skewed. If the lines and whiskers are about the same length, so this is the location of the median can tell you whether it's symmetric, positive, or negatively skewed. Also the whiskers can tell you the, the same story. If they're the same length, so like perfectly the same length, then it's approximately symmetric. And if it was symmetric, the median would be right there. Positively skewed, the right line would be longer than the left line. So here's the right line. Notice it's longer than the left line. And then if it's negatively skewed, it will have your right line being shorter than the left line. I just drew those because I thought you might want a, a diagram to show you what that would look like, the skewing of it. Oh, skew it. All right, so then we're going on to the cheese example. If box plots of two or more data sets are graphed on the same axis, the distributions can be compared. To compare the averages, use the location of the medians. To compare the variability, use the interquartile range, i.e. the length of the boxes. So you can also look at the length of the boxes to tell whether they're grouped together or whatever. Here's example 339. A dietitian is interested in comparing the sodium content of real cheese with the sodium content of a cheese substitute. The data for the two random samples are shown. Compare the distribution using box plots. And I couldn't talk about cheese without showing this commercial. At Cheese It, we expect a lot from our cheese. Knock, knock. Who's there? Interrupting cheese. Interrupting cheese. <laughs> should have seen that one coming. You should have, because that was... I even told you I was going to be interrupting you. <laughs> Morning, sir. Beautiful day, isn't it? We take the time for our cheese to mature before we bake it into every delicious cracker. Because it cheese it, real cheese matters. Okay, so anyhow, gotta have that commercial. I think it's hilarious. So, back to the cheese example. Here's your real cheese data. Here's your cheese substitute data. That's like Velveeta. Well, cheese, Velveeta does have some real cheese in it. I don't know. Cheese substitute. That sounds gross, doesn't it? Compare the distributions using box plots. So the first thing we need to do is arrange our data in order. And I'm going to do both of these at the same time since I'm arranging things in order. Might be on a little different order in your uh, notes. So pretend like you arrange these in order. This first set would be 40, 45, 90, 180, 220, 240, 310, 420. The second set of data would be 130, 180, 250, 260, 270, 290, 310, and 340. So now they're sorted. Then we need to do the median. So you do the median. It's halfway. Unfortunately, this is an even number of data. So the median is halfway between these two values. So you'd add them both together and take and divide by 2. So you'd end up with 200 for the median of the first set. The median of the low value to the, to the median is going to be halfway between 45 and 49. That's going to be your Q1, which is 45 plus 90 over 2. 
67.5. Then halfway between 240 and 310 would be where your Q3 is going to lie. And that's going to be 240 plus 310 over 2 gives you your Q3, quartile 3, which is 275. Do the same thing for the second set of data. Halfway between the 260 and 270 is going to be your median. That's going to end up to be 265. Halfway between 180 and 250 is going to be your Q1, which is going to be 215. And halfway between 290 and 310 is going to be your Q3, and that should end up to be 300. So there they are. These are your main, main numbers that you need to form both box plots. We have our five numbers of the first set. Here's our min, here's our max, and then our middle three, Q1, the median, and Q3. And then for the second set of data, you have your min, your max, and your three middle values, your quartile one, your median, and your quartile three. Let's plot them. So we're going to draw the scale, and a logical scale is going to be 0 to 500, because you have to take into account this guy goes up to 420 and goes down to 40. So if we just do 0 to 500, that'll take care of everything. So I'm going to draw my number line, and I'm going to go by hundreds. So this is going to be 0, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. Let's do the top one, the real cheese. By the way, Sam's has great cheese in a can. It's called Baker's and Chef's Cheddar Cheese Sauce. Excellent. OK. So I'm going to plot, I've got a 40, it looks like it would go about right there for my first data set. 67.5 is my Q1, 200, that lines up pretty well, and 275, and 420. Notice I left a space here, you need to leave a big space because you're going to have two box plots on the same, with the same scale. Then remember your box goes around your Q1 and your Q3. So we're going to have a box there and we're going to put our whiskers out. So there's our median and then draw your whiskers. Now if I look at this one, notice that my right uh, data, my right whisker is longer so this would be a negatively, a negatively skewed data set. Cheese substitute. So the cheese substitute, the min was 130, 215 is Q1, 265, 300, and 340. The box goes around your quartiles. So I would draw the box between 215 and 300. Bada boom, notice it's pink. And then I have my whiskers. So this data is positively skewed. And the median is almost in the, in the center of the box. So you know, kind of looks at that. Compare the plots. The distribution for the cheese substitute has a higher median than the median for the real cheese. So this one has a higher median. And the distribution of the real cheese is larger. So because you have a longer box, the distribution takes, there's more of a range there. So anyway, that's that. So you can just, this example was just to show you that you could put two box plots on the same thing to compare data sets. Statistics used in EDA, that's exploratory data analysis, the median and the interquartile range. Those are the statistics you use in EDA. They're said to be resistant statistics because they're not affected as much by outliers. And the, the non-resistant statistics are more affected by outliers, such as the mean and the standard deviation. It can really affect those. Median and interquartile range more accurately summarize the data when the distribution is skewed or contains outliers. So that's um, something to think about. All right, and scene.